Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is going to be a Java 2D bump mapping tutorial. Um, I found it difficult to find any kind of concrete code examples showing how to do bump mapping in 2D games, um, so I decided to go ahead and try it out for myself. Uh, so before I get started, I just wanted to go into the math behind bump mapping. First of all, what, what exactly is bump mapping? Um, basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a map of bumps that you use to, you apply it to some kind of surface in order to give it some kind of texture. You're not actually changing the geometry of the surface, a flat image is going to be a flat image. Um, but what you do is you're going to distort the surface normals of the flat image in order to make it look like it has some kind of bumpy texture. And that's exactly what bump mapping does. For example, if you take a look here, this is just pretend it's a 5x5 five five pixel bump map image where uh, black pixels represent lowest height, the dark gray pixels are getting higher, the light gray pixels is really high, and white is the highest. So if I flipped this on its side, conceptually it would look something like this, where the black pixels are low, gray, and then high. So it would look something like, like a bump coming out towards you, coming towards from the screen some kind of embossment. So how exactly does this help with lighting? This is um, this is how the uh, bump mapping works. What you have to do is you have to calculate the normals for every single pixel. Now in math, the normal vector is the, uh, the vector that uh, the surface is currently facing, or if you want a more technical definition, it's like the the vector perpendicular to the tangent of any point in the surface. Basically, it's the direction that the, the surface is facing. So in this case, we want to find out which direction the pixels are facing from a top-down view. Um, so we're going to use that 5x5 five five pixel image we had before as an example. Um, you notice here that before it's like a bump coming out towards you. so. It would only be natural that this pixel would be facing this way, this pixel would be facing that way, so it makes sense. And I calculate these normal vectors, the direction these pixels are facing for every pixel, and the way that I do that is I find the differences between the heights of the neighboring pixels. So black is a zero height, dark gray is 80 height, and light gray is 200 height. So in order to calculate the normal vector for this pixel I do 0 minus 80 that's negative 80 for the x direction and 0 minus 80 that's negative 80 for the y direction so it's going this direction or is facing that direction if we do for this one this is 200 minus 0 for the x direction that's 200 and 80 minus 80 for the y direction that's 0 so this pixel is facing that way Simple. All you have to do is do that for every single pixel, and you will have something called the normal map, which is a mapping of normal vectors for every pixel. Um, so, now that you have the direction that the pixel is facing, you can actually um, find out whether or not that pixel is facing the light. And what you do is you have to multiply, find the dot product of these two vectors. Let's call vector A the vector that the pixel is facing. I'm going to use this one as, a, as an example. It's facing towards the right, and the light is up here. Let's call that vector B. Um, so obviously you can see here that this pixel is facing away from the light. And in order to find out whether or not it's facing towards the light, you can do the dot product, which is A dot product B. And it's simple. It's just multiply the x's and add them to the product of the y's. And you'll get a number, which is the dot product. If these two vectors are facing away from each other, your dot product will be negative. If they're facing towards each other, your dot product will be positive. Pretty simple. Here.
positive if facing towards the light, negative if facing away from the light, and zero if it's like sideways to the light. So if these two vectors are facing in the same direction, you will get the maximum possible dot product. And obviously if these two vectors are facing away from each other, you're going to get the minimum possible dot product. And because of the, the formula for the dot product, the maximum is always the negative of the minimum. So if the max is 100,000, minimum is 100,000 as well. Or negative 100,000, I mean. And that's one of the things that I use for my lighting scheme. So, steps to calculating uh, light, uh, doing the lighting for bump maps. One, calculate the normal vectors for every pixel. That's here. This is step one. Get all these arrows. Find out which direction all the pixels are facing. Step two, for every pixel, you have to find the dot product in order to find out whether or not this pixel is facing towards the light or not. So this is step two. Step three, and you have to apply some kind of lighting scheme to the pixel, given whatever information you have. Now, my lighting scheme is not n very complicated, is it? It's um, extremely simple. If you look at something like OpenGL's lighting equation, it is insane. It has all sorts of stuff, ambient, diffuse, emission, lighting, material, shininess, long brightness, all that weird stuff. I'm not going to get into that. Um, my lighting scheme is extremely, extremely simple, but uh, it works for me, so that's pretty much it. So, what I have here is I have a couple things. I have an image, and in this case I'm going to use this image. Um, hmm, how do I move this? Let me just... Okay. So this is the image I'm going to use. It was a tile set that I tried working on before. Anyway, um, I flattened it all out. This is the actual tile set image. This is the image that I'm going to use, and this is the bump map that I'm going to use. So um, if you look closely, you'll notice that, remember, the black means lowest height. The brighter areas means higher height. So I was trying to get like a... Here, these are like tiles, so the cracks in between are low, and then the tiles are like kind of jutting out outwards. And this is like a metal thing with like these little dots popping up or something. I don't really know. I was just making stuff up. Anyway, um, yeah, we have that. That's the image and the bumped image. We have the lights. All the light is is um, just the position and radius. So let's go ahead and um, go to the important stuff here, bumped image. So first of all, we need an image. We need a copy because we don't want to mess with the original image. Anything we do, we have to do to the copy. Um, anytime we apply lighting, we take a pixel from the image, do some lighting with that pixel, and put it into the copy. So map, this is a map of the uh, colors, which is um, which is basically just a bunch of numbers like this, 80, 200, so this would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 80, 80, 80, 0, 0, 80, 200, etc. That would be what goes in map. Um, we have the width and height, how much pixels, uh, the bump map, yeah, and the normal map. This is the important one. Every pixel that we are going to have needs a normal, and that's it this vector. So uh, my lighting scheme uses only these two variables, softness and power. Uh, that's actually just softness. I don't, I, I only use the power to help. But uh, again, my lighting scheme is extremely simple. So we get the image, create a new copy, get the bump map, initialize your rays, get the colors here. I put the colors into the map. And here I calculate the normals. And like I said before, here it's just the x is the left pixel minus the right pixel, y is the top pixel minus the bottom pixel. So that's what I do here. The x is the minus one plus one, y is the minus one plus one. The difference between those two. 
Uh, this is the variables other. Uh, I don't normalize the vectors. I don't. The way that my lighting scheme works is uh, I don't really need it. So again, you can use a different lighting scheme if you want. But mine is simple, and it kind of works. So that's step one. We finished that. Now step two, for every pixel, find the dot product of a pixel's normal vector and the light vector. Here's step two, find the dot product. And that's what we do here. First I get the light info, I get the light's position, x, y, and radius. Um, get the normal vector, this is vector A, shown here. This is just from the normal map that we have. Get the light vector, and that's just the position of this pixel to the position of the light which is just this, light x minus the position of the pixel, light y minus the position of the pixel. So now we have the two vectors, a and b. Calculate the dot product. What is the dot product? x times x plus y times y. That's what I do here, ax times bx plus ay times by. And I finally have all the info, info that I need to do some lighting. So first of all, I get the original pixel from the image. Here I get the red, green, and blue components and then I apply the lighting to the pixel. The way my lighting scheme works is that first I find the distance. I have two percentages basically. Um, one of them is softness. This is like, uh, I guess this is the harshness or contrast. The higher the softness, um, the less prominent the bump map effect takes place or something. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but that that's uh, used for the lighting. And I have a second percent, which is the amount of distance to the light. So here, this pixel is pretty far away from the light. If the light's radius was like over here or something, like this, then, um, you know, it's pretty far. The distance would be um, 0% if it's all the way, it's, if it's right next to the light, and 100% if it's at the radius of the light. So in this case, this pixel is about 60% or something. I'm not sure. So I have those two percents. First one for the light, second one for the shade. Multiply those by 255. And then for each one of the red, green, and blue, I add the light and I subtract the shade. Then I clamp them between 0 and 255, and that's pretty much it. I put the final pixel color in the copy, and that's and that's it. Um, that's that's my lighting. I grab the original pixel color, do some lighting on it, and then I put it in the final copy. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. If I run it, I'm gonna, <clears throat> first of all, I'm gonna get rid of the contrast and make the light larger. This is the original image. Um, this, this is just a flat image. Uh, this is what it looks like without any uh, sort of bump mapping. And if we uh, add the bump map, you can see that, let me just lower the light a little bit. It's starting to take effect here. You can clearly see that the tiles are jutting out towards you. Um, here, that's obvious because I have the black, which means it's low, and then the kind of gray, which means the tiles are jutting out. So here you can see that the light of the tiles are actually coming out towards you, and that effect looks pretty cool, I gotta say. I mean, compared to the original flat image here, this is just nothing. And then you add this bump map here, and it looks awesome. And uh, I use the contrast to, or the softness, to find out how much uh, I want the bump map effect to take place. So this is like way too much. That looks weird. I'm trying to find like the perfect amount of bump map to use. This looks pretty good. Yeah, that doesn't look so bad. 
Um, so that's pretty much that. I have other test images that I use. This is the image, by the way. So let's do the logo. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's weird. Forgot to change the bump map. I have it in bump map 7, I think. Yep. So again, let me show you without the lighting effect. That's just a flat image. And then uh, I put the bump map on. And boom. You can see it jutting out towards you. And you can obviously see that the shadows are dynamically created depending on where the light is. That looks awesome. Whoa. Okay, I'm just messing around there. Um, what else do I have? I can do different bump maps. What do I have? I have a rocks. Rocks bump map. Dot JPEG. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that looks awesome. Okay, so this is like a cinder block texture. Again, flat image, and then the bump map on it. You can see. Oh, that looks awesome. Look at that texture. Mm. Of course, you, uh, you can use whatever bump maps you want. I have a lot of test bump maps here. Like this. Guess what this looks like. It's flat, and then it's like a pyramid. It's like a pyramid jutting out towards you, basically. Let's see what that looks like with the logo. It was bump map 9. Dot PNG. Sweet. Look at that. See? You can see the shadows are clearly changing depending on the, where the light is. That's because of the normals. These pixels are facing away from the light. I put shade on it. These pixels are facing towards the light. I make them brighter. That's cool. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the bump mapping tutorial. Um, hopefully you learned something and um, something to think about or apply. Maybe you think about applying in your games. Uh, so thanks for watching.